In the last episode, I walked you through all of the step-by-step -step acoustic tests we took while building this studio. You got to see the full acoustical transformation, checking out the incremental improvements that each module made by looking at scientific measurements from Room EQ Wizard. So now we're gonna go through the acoustic testing process with Sonarworks Sound ID Reference, and we're using their new integration that runs on or with the UAD platform. I've never done this before, so this is gonna be a first time. And so we're gonna use the Sonarworks testing microphone that is already plugged in over XLR. And uh, we're gonna use this to be able to tune the room and add in a little bit of very slight room EQ tweaks as the final layer of improvement. Let's go. So where do we start? We go through, now that's monitor controller. Did that one say, oh, you have one for headphones and this is headphones the separate one for the main monitors. Okay. And then where do we go from here? Open sound ID, calibration profile. So it should give you the ability to use your calibration file. So let's just go okay, yeah. And then yeah, give it access. Apollo connected, I guess continue. So select outputs, yeah, let's do that. Calibration profile, good. So we need to find the cal file for the mic. Just go next, I think it's the only prompt we can do, switch between target mode. Um, add new output. So now we will select your Apollo. There we go. Nice, so left, right, monitors, uh, you can play a test signal. Left, right. Okay, good. Now we can go click open measure. So it has a separate measurement app from the correction app. There's measure. Good, get started. And select your speaker configuration, 2.0 stereo. Good. And let's go next. I'm waiting for it to tell us to load the cal file. Okay, great. So I just tick off these boxes as we go. Your input is, and output are routed to the same device or uses the same clock source, yep. Microphone signal cannot be heard through the speakers, so let's turn up the gain, and you just we need to make sure this is not feeding back through the speakers, obviously. So we got gain up, we're seeing gain. Yeah, good, okay, and then bring the app back up. There we go. And we can tick that box. Great, next. And then what audio interface are we using? Other interface. Microphone input channel, yeah, let's choose that. Okay. Good. Perfect. Huh. So it's just gonna ask us for the mic ID. So there you go. Nice. And there is the calibration for the mic. So you can see, yeah, it's wanting to take that frequency response out. You can see the differences between the zero, the 90, and the 30 cal files. Next. Universal Audio Thunderbolt, left, right. You can play a test signal on each one. Left speaker. Yep. Right speaker. Yep. Um, we probably want to turn up our output volume from there. Let's try the test left again. Left speaker. That's better. Right speaker. Good. Next, uh, your sweet spot is reduce your output gain. Yeah, try the test tone again. Just double check it's not. Please in. adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Maybe down a little bit. Left speaker. Right speaker. Yeah, that's pretty good. And yes, my volume is set. There we go. And then clear out anything that you could bump into around your listening position. I mean, we're we've got out pretty much everything we can. We've already done that. That's good. Hold the measurement mic in front in your hand, or use a stand if it's more convenient. I'm completely fine using the hand. Keep the microphone in the center of your listening spot. Adjust the mic to where your ears would be when you're seated. Uh, point the microphone between your speakers. So maybe what we'll do when we do this process, there's going to be I think um, over just over 30 measurements. I will get out of the room because we only need one person doing this or I, I can do it and you can go out of the room. Mm -hmm. It'll be probably faster and easier for me to do that. Uh, but yeah, we just can't have two of us in the room. And it'll be, a, again, a series of like little things as it chirps to locate the mic and then it'll be it'll be really fast sign sweeps.
we're good to go. So yeah, there were 37 measurements and this process looked to me like it was exactly the same as running the software standalone app. Go next. And there we go. So it's showing us you have separate plots for the left and the right speaker. And that's interesting because the left and right speakers might have slight differences in driver performance, right? So that's uh, what you'd refer to as channel imbalance. And this is really common in headphones as well. That's why the Sonarworks individually calibrated headphones are kind of the gold standard because when you just get a generic profile, it doesn't account for that individual set of headphones, left and right drivers. Like they do their best to match them in the factories, but you know, with various, unless you're talking about a three or $4,000 set of headphones, they might not be that well matched. Yeah. Same thing with studio monitors, they can't exactly match the driver component. So there's always gonna be a little bit of variation. And then the other thing is uh, cabinets, cabinet materials, cabinet tolerances, QA stuff. Um, you get yeah, every every monitor cabinet has a set of resonances in it that's just like room acoustics. You have modes inside your cabinet that relate to the dimension. They're rectangular boxes, just like your room is a rectangle. So um, this is accounting for these slight differences that are between the two monitors. And then the other thing that um, this is doing that uh, it can't discriminate against um, in a room is it can't tell what's the difference between a cabinet resonance and a room resonance. So it, it'll try and correct for everything altogether, but this is where I'm gonna go through this with a fine tooth comb with you, and we're gonna dial this in so we're not just letting it do a broadband correction. I don't typically want it to do that in a treated room. So yeah, but that's what it's showing you. And it's showing you that there's a, also a 0 0.2 dB difference in the right uh, monitor. And then it's also showing you see the delay. This is good to talk about. The delay, this is one of the reasons why we do it. So we don't just use the RoomEQ app to be able to add a layer of equalization to the room. I think the more important thing that I wanna do this with this is phase aligning the speakers. So even if we use lasers, and even if we're hyper, hyper precise in how we align the speakers, there might be a millimeter, you know, 16th of an inch difference between the time of flight between the two speakers. So if there's even a very, very tiny difference in time of flight, then things like transients are not going to, like clicky stuff, right? It's not gonna arrive at your auditory system at exactly the same time. So that's one of the, the key things that this is doing, which is gonna affect your, your imaging, your perception of imaging and your perception of how, how transients feel, is it's going to compensate for the very slight physical difference in the distance of the speakers from your ears. So that's what it's done there, is it's adjusted and said, okay, the right speaker is uh, 0.1 milliseconds time of flight different than the left speaker, and it's gonna correct for that. So click save and finish. So that's good, let's save that. Next setup is how we apply the calibration. So we can calibrate using the uh, desktop app. We can calibrate it using the plugin in the DAW, or you can export it to an enabled device. It says open the reference app. Cool, let's click that. Universal Audio Thunderbolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A monitor, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now select your calibration profile from there. So click up there and then um, open an existing profile, I think. Dynaudio SW Proj, that's what you want. And there we go. So what we were in was the measure app and you can open that again later if you, if you want to, but now we're in the actual calibration app. So this is the app you're gonna use going forwards. These lines that it's showing is the separate calibration, meaning the changes that it's gonna do with its EQ system to both the left and the right speaker. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take a look up here and you can show and hide different areas of the interface. So if you wanna be able to see what it looked like before, I always look at that. And this is much more familiar to us now that we've been looking at the RoomEQ wizard results, right? This looks much more like the RoomEQ frequency response, the RoomEQ wizard one. So we can see that we have the bass lifted low end from pushing the speakers up against the wall and getting that nice, fairly smooth shelf lift. And then we can see we do have a couple of nulls here. And then we have everything else is, is looking fairly even, fairly controlled. And I'm quite happy with the room north of 300 Hertz. So like in RoomEQ Wizard, when we use the psychoacoustic smoothing or the VAR smoothing, you can see that line is between 
plus and minus 3 dB, which is an, an incredibly good tight spec, especially for such a small room yeah. with only up to 5.5 inch treatment. So that's what it looks like before. I would say this converges and agrees quite, quite well with what we measured in Room EQ Wizard. So now we can take a look at what it's gonna try and do. So we show the calibration, we can get rid of the before. Okay, so it's going to do some subtractive EQing here to remove that low frequency lift that we're getting from the low end. Now, you may or may not want it to do that because some engineers, and I'm in this camp, like a slightly bass lifted low end, especially on smaller monitors that have quite a steep roll off. As we know, um, that, can be, that can be nice to use this calibration profile without the low end negative adjustment. But uh, you also have a sub that you're gonna be throwing into the mix later. So um, you would definitely be creating a separate calibration profile for use with the sub. So you could flip between them. But we can see what it is definitely gonna do is it's gonna try and put a little bit of less energy into those resonances. So if we show the before and after at the same time, you can see this is how the room reads. There's a little resonance that's here and another little resonance that's here. And it's going to just put a little bit of less energy into those resonances, which can be pleasing. It can help to not necessarily eliminate them, but it can help to take their, their peak SPL level down just by putting a, a bit less volume into those. So what do I wanna do here? Let's hide the before. And it is going to attempt to use its EQ system to flatten the response of the room. But uh, something that a lot of people misinterpret about the Sonarworks Sound ID reference system is they think this is actually trying to force it to a flat SPL graph, and it's not. So Sonarworks did their own research similar to how Sean Olive and Harmon and Floyd Toole did about what psychoacoustically our auditory system perceives as flat, which is not SPL flat. And it's happening under the hood so you can't see the adjustments, but when you say, and you use the flat target in Sonarworks, it's not actually making it flat. It's making it what you would perceive psychoacoustically based on their research as flat and balanced. So that's what it's doing. Now, I will typically adjust this. So you know how just earlier we were talking, I said, I'm happy with the room above 300 Hertz. I don't want it to be adjusting. So if, if you're in a really nicely treated room like this, we know we've taken care of our early reflection points on every surface. We know we've taken care of the resonances above 300. Then what's happening is just what the monitors are doing, we, the true sound from the monitors. And I don't necessarily want it fussing with that. So that's where we're gonna use this down here, which is the custom target. When you enable the custom target, you get these sliders that allow you to restrict sound ID references range of allowable calibration. So all I would do here is I would take this and drag it down so that we are getting it so that it's not affecting anything above that 300 Hertz. There we go, we can even just type it manually in. So it's not affecting anything above the shorter frequency and it's allowed to affect things that are down to 20 Hertz. And now if we wanted to have it not affect that range as well, we could drag this up and so it would just be affecting those resonances that were in there, or we could just leave it uh, to be affecting the full, the full bottom end. Now you also do have the ability to EQ here. So you could have it try and even this out and then just do a broad spectral lift like that if you like that lifted low end. And so you can see that that might be something, that, that kind of base tilted uh, bottom end. You can also do that in the top end if you want. You can tilt down the top end. So you have full control over this and, and what you would call a custom target or a house curve. Let's, uh, let's eliminate that for now and just say we're going to let it adjust the bottom end fully below 300 hertz. Now let's check out this fancy integration about how it works with your, your Apollo. Okay. okay, so I think this is what we do. We go apply the profile. Done. And then now we go over to your UAD system. Sweet, yeah, and we can see it's copied that over. So we can see the profile, the calibration is active. We have safe headroom. Now what safe headroom is, is it's not even really needed in this scenario, but if Sonarworks Sound ID Reference is boosting anything and you don't have safe headroom enabled, then it could actually clip your system. Okay. So what it does is let's say it's it's trying to correct for a null and it's doing like a 6 dB boost. It would drop the entire system output by 6 dB so that that addition that it's doing, that additive 
EQ move would not be then going over zero dBFS. Right, that so, makes sense. Yeah, and uh, there it is. That's neat to see how this integration works, actually. So I've never worked on a system before where it's been integrated into the interface. Um, so that's that's seamless. That's great. Uh, and that's the process. So So basically, all you do now is when you're ready to turn your sub on and make a separate calibration profile, you'll go through the same process that I just did with the mic, and you'll go through using the Measure app, and you'll create a new profile, and then you can, I imagine, switch profiles in, um, in SoundID Reference and then send it over to the Apollo again. In either case, you've got your profiles here, and all of your profiles will show up here, so you can go create your sub profile, open existing profile, create a new one, and send it to the Apollo. And that should be good. Right on, brother? That's really easy. There we are. Coming up in the next episode, we're going to do the final room reveal, show you the budget and exactly what we spent on materials, and chat with my client Thomas about what it's been like working in this new studio. See you there. <laughs>